What's up, guys? Stevie B here with the hammer. With the Poland hammer. Yes, he is. Yes, and uh, here on uh, Dynasty Life Fantasy Football, we're just we're gonna bring you our our rookie draft for one of our uh, our home dynasty league uh, that we're in. So we're just gonna go over the draft and kind of uh, just go over, I guess, what we're thinking and uh, why people chose who they chose, or however it may be. But uh, I guess let's get started. So one hundred and one went to Drake London. And the 102 went to Brees Hall. Now, this person had both the number one and the number two pick here. Um, I think it was pretty obvious he was going to go Hall and London. Um, doesn't matter, I guess, what order. But uh, what do you think that he was going to do there, Hammer? Yeah, I knew Brees Hall was going to go either one or two. Um, I wasn't sure if he was going to go with Drake London. There was a number of different options there. But... At that position, if you're getting Drake London and Brees Hall, you really can't go wrong. So I don't have too much of a problem with that. Yeah, definitely. And then looks like Garrett Wilson came off as the number three pick there, um, which I, I guess I probably would agree with. I don't know. Unless, you need, a, unless you need an RB, then you can go Kenny Walker. But Yeah, but he has – I mean, he could have he could have taken a running back but I think he needed more impact at the wide receiver position at yeah. this particular point. This team needs a lot of help anyway. That's right. That's right. So if he would have took Kenneth Walker or Garrett Wilson, I don't think it would have made that much of an impact either way. But the smarter play for dynasty purposes is take a wide receiver because of the longevity. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. too. I would have probably went wide receiver there um as well or you could go rb and then try to use it as some trade bait but safest way i think for that person would have been just uh garrett wilson was fine there i agree with uh, that. and then i actually had the 104 there and i took sky Moore um who compliment patty mahomes <laughs> that i have on my team uh for me it was kind of an easy decision i was going to take the risk um no matter what Originally, I think I had the 106, and the guy that had the 105 was saying he was going to take Sky Moore. So I had that's, to get in front of him. Uh, that's, so I that sent you into a little frenzy up the up the draft board. It did because I didn't want to. I didn't want to really take uh, Jameson or Olave. Not that I don't like them, but just in my particular situation where I have. Patrick Mahomes. Now, if I didn't have Patrick Mahomes, I probably would have just stayed put and been happy with, you know, Jamison Williams, Chris Olave, whoever fell to me there. Um, yeah. What do you think there? Yeah, I mean, that's a good pick. I know we had talked about it, you know, uh, in our chat and just as we were going back and forth in the group chat, everything. That, that was your target. You maneuvered your way up to that pick to get that guy so getting him for you for your specific team because you got patrick mahomes is just the the pieces fit there to just take him and have him run with you know run with patrick mahomes and when you take a look at the landscape of the kansas city wide receiver core juju's on a one-year deal Nicole hardman's never been you know a, a true number one or a number two you could say what you want they did sign uh valdez scantling to a three-year deal but you know that doesn't say much to me so i think sky Moore over the next two to three years has a real good chance of being a real impact player for them even if he you know even if he slots in at the number two in the next two to three years then you're in good shape yeah yeah definitely so uh yeah that was easy for me um, and then we got Burks, Kenny Walker come off after that, uh, along with Jamison Williams and Olave were the next ones to come off the board there. Um, I like – I was all right on Burks. I mean, I liked him. I liked that he landed in a perfect spot. Uh, but he also was – like he was mainly like a slot guy in college. So there are – you know, there are, were always like a little bit of – concerns um you can't just say oh he's aj brown even though that was kind of like his compass he's not aj brown obviously <laughs> no he's well, not he but but the situation is pretty good right because the targets are going to be there so 
you know, Ryan Tannehill is not exactly, you know, Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, but I feel like he's a competent enough quarterback where Traylon Burks is going to be at least an impact guy from a fantasy standpoint, wide receiver three flex guy right out of the gate just because of the opportunity and some stability at the quarterback position. So I, I like him a lot just because, like I said, the stability, but you know, it's, you could have, there's some other options they could have went with there. So, you know, you don't really know until the season starts, but I just like him from an opportunity standpoint. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then the whole, I don't know, the whole asthma thing. I don't know. I don't really know what to think. I don't know. Whether... I was going to, I was going to bring that up, but you know, that, that remains to be, we haven't heard much since that report. Yeah, so I, you know, I don't know, you know, what what to think. To you know, is that a bad thing? Obviously, it's not a good thing, but I mean, we'll see. I guess as we get closer uh, to the, I season. feel like, and also too, I feel like things in the off season get blown way out of proportion because there's really not a whole lot else to talk about. So it might be a little overstated, but I guess you know, once the preseason gets here, and if you start hearing some more rumblings about preseason, and he's not playing in preseason games then I would start to worry a little bit, but not so much right now. Yeah, I mean, he's he's not like he's had the issue before, so, you know, hopefully it's not uh, it's not a big thing. And listen, but, bro, uh, in, in Nashville, Tennessee, in the middle of the summer, it's fucking, it's hot, dude. So, like, it's, you know, it's, it's understandable, you know? <laughs> that's true. And then, uh, all right, so Jamison Williams, Olave come off the board after that. Um, everything pretty normal, I guess, so far. Nothing kind of... Uh, crazy or yeah. ordinary um and then james cook goes at uh one two three four five what is that the one oh one eight there one nine so james cook goes at one nine which it's not really early i don't mind him there compared to like some of the other guys that are left over there uh so i, I do like that and then, yeah, he was a he was a target for for Bagala at that position. So he he was in a similar boat where he he wanted he wanted James Cook from the rip, and if James Cook wasn't there, he was going to trade out of that spot. And James Cook just landed in his lap, so he happily took the pick and kept it moving. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was in the perfect spot. I mean, there's yeah. no way he wasn't not going to be there, considering the guys that are on the board before that, like. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not taking, you know, Cook over Olave or Jamison Williams or Kenny Walker or any of those guys. So, yeah. Um, but I will take him over Christian Watson, which brings us to the uh, to the next guy there. Um, I I almost moved up. I almost made a trade with Bagala to get into that one nine where he took Cook because I was looking at Watson. Now, I don't need a ton of help on my team. My roster is pretty loaded. Um, but obviously he plays for the Packers, no Devontae Adams. So it, it was definitely a thought, but I still like him also too. Like we talked about with no Devontae Adams, there's going to be some targets there for him to, to eat into Randall Cobb can't stay healthy. We don't know if Alan Lazard is ready to be a true number one. So I feel like there would be some opportunities and some targets for him to, you know, at least be in that flex conversation. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, he's got great opportunities. Just got to, you know, try and, and capitalize on it. You know, there's, how much no, you get. there's no better guy to have throwing you the ball than, than number 12. Now, he doesn't trust rookie receivers historically, <laughs> but I don't think he's going to have a choice now. You know, like I said, he has Lazard. He has Cobb. He has um, – they drafted Dubois. They have Amari Rogers. Robert Tanyan should be back the two running backs. So it's going to be interesting to see how the ball gets spread around without Devontae. Yeah. I think my main concern with Watson, he obviously he's not the craziest, most athletic dude. He's not obviously one of those top end guys in the draft, but you know, how much longer is Aaron Rodgers going to play, right? How much longer is he going to be tied to Aaron Rodgers, especially when we're talking yeah. about in a, you know, in a dynasty perspective, you know, do you want, would you rather take that chance on Christian Watson or would you rather take that chance on, you know, like a George Pickens, right? And in, in that kind of, in that area or the, or Dotson, you know, instead of Watson. So that's my main thing with Watson is that for the future, you know, after this one year or maybe even two years, you know, we don't really know what's going to happen after that. Um, well, so I think, I think Aaron, if, 
and I'm pretty sure he has about three years guaranteed under where there's guaranteed money for the next three years, I believe. Yeah. Um, so well, if you're, you're getting it, it also yeah. too depends on the team that drafts him. Like if I would have drafted him, I would have been fine taking that risk because I have other guys. I'm not counting on him having to ascend to yeah. a number one. If I if all I need him to be is a wide receiver three with wide receiver two upside for the next three years, then so be it. I could make a trade. Hope you could pick up somebody off of waivers potentially. You know, you could dip into next year's draft. So, you know, it all depends on the roster construction of your team. And listen, if he if he busts out this year and has, I'm not saying he's gonna be Jamar Chase, but you know, if he could give you 800, 900 yards, but close to, you know, seven or eight touchdowns as a red zone threat, then you're like, all right, we can, I can do something with that. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think, I guess just for a dynasty, especially, I mean, I like, I think Pickens is way more talented and I think Dotson is more talented. So, you know, obviously you you got to measure, you know, way based on, you know, way in the talent and also the situation at the same time. Yep. yep. It's a fine line. So it's, sure. it's, sure. it's a, you know, it's, it, it's a, it's a tough decision. And then again, depending on what is your need absolutely right now. I mean, if you're needing Christian Watson to go in right now obviously. and produce yeah. and you're yeah. probably not in contention at this moment, you know, yeah, so you might be in trouble. If that's the case, maybe you don't take Watson. Maybe you go for the longer run. Maybe you take Pickens or Dotson instead. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, at least for me, that's how I think of it. You know, because it all depends on obviously, you know, your your roster construction and what you have currently. So yeah, no, I I totally agree with that. And I think, like you said, it's a little bit of a fine line to have to walk. You know, depending on what your roster construction is. But you know, overall, I think he's going to be pretty talent. You know, a pretty good producer it just depends on how quickly him he can establish that rapport and how much aaron's going to trust him yeah yeah definitely definitely so that's always uh something remaining to be seen because you know let me tell he drops the ball christian watson i think he came in as like the leader in drop percentage rate aaron Rodgers just does not play that shit no he doesn't he (laughs) He will not throw you the fucking ball so so if he if he gets in the doghouse early it could be a long season for sure oh i'm i'm hoping he hasn't gotten the doghouse already just through normal like otas and shit but well uh, it's i think aaron understands a little bit that he is a rookie you know north dakota state isn't exactly a power con you know a powerhouse of a school etc etc so it's gonna be uh it's gonna be interesting Definitely is going to be interesting. I, know. I I just don't think Aaron Rodgers gives up. Uh, I mean, you saw that playoff game last year where he just refused to throw the ball to anybody else except for Devontae Adams. I, I'm the biggest <laughs> Packers fan, and once Mercedes Lewis fumbled the ball and that whole game turned, he wasn't throwing to anybody. He threw one to uh, Aaron Jones towards the end of the half. And then after that, when Aaron Jones didn't score, it was Devontae or bust. So yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't want to have to rehash that, but yeah. Yeah. All right. So after that, uh, McBride comes off the board, which I, I thought was kind of early. Um, just, I guess, considering our league, it's only one tight end. Um, but I don't know. That's just me. I, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I didn't like that pick too much considering they do have Zach Ertz. Who they just re-signed, um, but that that could be a long-term play. I mean, you know, if once yeah, again yeah. your roster construction means everything, but for that, for the for what was still on the board, I would have taken other guys. Oh yeah, yeah, Pickens, Dotson still up there, Alec Pierce yeah. still up there, so. Tolbert, Spiller. You know, we do, we do have uh, some defensive players in this league, so I, I uh, you know, some defensive guys went off the board as well uh in the later rounds um, i just want to I, touch on um aiden hutchinson uh, real quick yeah, on the 114. so originally that was my slot i was in the 114 that was my slot and i obviously my first pick was in the second round and i really wanted him on my team because that was essentially the only kind of whole question mark on my team and I was yeah. really hoping that people would just load up on offensive guys. So I was a little disappointed to see Hutchinson go at the 114. I didn't pick to like the 208 um, or the 209. 
So I was a little disappointed, but I think he will have an opportunity to really, you know, um, get after the quarterback and put up some some decent points from the D line position. So that was a guy I was targeting. I didn't get him. Yeah. Um, all right. So after that, we go into that second round here where you have Woods and then Dotson falls all the way to that, you know, that two two there in a fourteen team league. I mean, I didn't think he'd last that long, but uh, but he did. And um, apparently he's got a pretty good connection with uh, his new quarterback. So uh, what do you think about Dotson? Yeah, I mean, listen, they did re-sign Terry McLaurin. We did an episode on Terry McLaurin before. We didn't know what his situation is going to be. There's some clarity on that. So I think, to be honest, that bodes well for Dotson because he wouldn't have to come in even if Terry was there or they traded him, whatever. I think that goes really well as a one-two punch with McLaurin and Dotson on the other end. So now, you know, he's going to see secondary defenders. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll be good for his his development now. I'm not a huge fan of Carson Wentz, but also, too, considering the, the roster construction of this particular team, she was a very strong team. So it's not like she needs him to come in there and be wide receiver two, wide receiver three even. She could be a flex. He could be a flex on, on yeah. this particular team. And if you get some upside there, then you're really talking about a steal. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then Alec Pierce goes right after that. I, I love Alex that pick. As well, um, which was a great pick uh, for that team there. <clears throat> and then uh, Kenny Pickett goes off the board. I'm not really a fan of the QBs. I mean, in our league, we only had a three-round draft. We increased it to four, um, I think, right after. Well, next year, yeah. And, um, I mean, we're it's a one QB league, so – I don't know. I guess you don't necessarily need it, but unless you net really believe in them, then okay. And you can um, toss him on the taxi squad, and you don't have to really worry about it taking up a roster spot. So I wasn't a fan of the pick either, but hey, listen, yeah. you're still on. Right. And then um, let's see. White goes right after, um, which was a good pick. That team has Lenny Fournette, I believe. That was a solid pick. Smart yeah. pick. So good pick. Uh, for him there and then i say a spiller goes uh right after who might take away a little bit of red zone uh some goal line carries from uh eckler this year um you know eckler wants he wanted a running mate he's been saying it but he doesn't want that full kind of workload and if they could give it to somebody kind of in between like the- if they could give it to somebody, you know, in between, in between the 20s where, you know, all that yardage is not just killing Eckler, you know, third and short, second and short. Why would we run an Eckler up the middle? We could give him a little bit of rest. You know what I mean? Some yeah, and it's a really, it's a really, it's a really good offense. And even if he gets, you know, five or six goal line carries throughout the season, maybe a little more, eight goal line carries, you know, inside the five, inside the 10. You know, you turn that into four or five touchdowns, you could find flex appeal there, especially if you have Eckler. And he's also good trade bait to to the team that has Eckler. Yeah, that's true, too. Yep, definitely, definitely. Um, Tyler Algier goes off the board next. Another good pick there, um, considering who's left. Uh, That team, I believe, is Rondell's team. So he has a pretty... Pretty good team um, guy that's going to, you know, probably just sit on his bench at first unless he uh, comes out swinging. They already had said that Cordell Patterson, they're uh, putting back the kind of wide receiver. He won't be featured as running back as much. So mm-hmm. um, with Algier and uh, with, uh, uh, Damian Williams, I believe they're, they're going to be, you know, Splitting, yeah. up, splitting up that backfield. So not a, a great offense to be in, but a good opportunity at least uh, for Al Gier there, who I'm actually trying to get. Um, <laughs> but it's actually a good kind of situation where I have a, a good kind of uh, – a good reason for this. I have Damian Williams on my bench, but the team that has Al Gier also has Antonio Gibson. I was able to get into the third round of this draft and get um, Robinson real late. And 
So I'm thinking I can try and, you know, persuade something with that swap where he kind of needs Robinson. I could kind of use that. It's a need, need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't mind having to give up, you know, a pick or something like that just to kind of uh, sweeten it up for him. But uh, yeah. it's, something, it's something that would make sense for both sides. I had I sent the trade over. I haven't gotten anything back yet. So I don't think he's uh, as active as kind of some of us here. But, yeah, but uh, once the season, once preseason rolls around that first week, people really start locking in a little more. So we'll see what, what happens there. I mean, I do like Algier. He's not a crazy talented. They can always just, you know, next year draft like fucking Bijan or something like that. So you never know. Um, yeah. He didn't have crazy high draft capital. So, uh, But Tolbert goes off the board right after. That's good value, man. Which was really good value, especially there. And that team is like Neat. last – there's the last place team there in the gutter. They also had drafted Garrett Wilson um, in the first round uh, just for that. That's good building blocks right there. So got some young wide receivers to kind of build around. Uh, so a good pick there for him. Um, off the board next goes uh, Zamir White to uh, the hammer over here. That's uh, right. Tell us about uh, what made you, I guess, take him there. and uh, A couple of different things. Number one. As I said before, I didn't need – I don't have a ton of needs, like just outstanding needs. So for this particular pick, number one, he's a young running back. Number two, I have Josh Jacobs, who they the Raiders declined the fifth-year option on. Kenyon Drake is on a one-year deal. So that pick at that spot, I was targeting him anyway, considering I had two second-round picks. So I had the 209 and the 214. And, you know, I, I just needed guys that, especially with Josh Jacobs' situation, that, hey, listen, if I can get him and the Raiders don't have Josh Jacobs next year, like I said, Kenyon Drake's on a one-year deal. If Zamir White is a starting running back next year, then I got an RB, hopefully two. Yeah. So yeah. it just made sense all the way around. Definitely. Um yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, next pick there goes Desmond Ritter. Again, another pick I don't like, the QB. Uh, there's just no reason, I guess. Uh, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, next pick was my pick in the second round, which was the 211. I got David Bell. He was just the best on the board at that point in time, like, by far. So, um, great receiver. Fell in drafts because he didn't have a good, um, a good combine, but to go with Deshaun Watson, you know, a long run play, not something I'm looking to play him this year at all, but for the long run to pair up with, uh, you know, him being paired up with Watson, I, I kind of just, I like Bell. I like to take that chance there. Yeah. There's, there's, if, if there's good upside there and there's very low risk. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. So that's, so that's I, what, you know, at that point it's like, Hey, listen, if I could get a guy that could potentially be the wide receiver too, yeah, you know. absolutely. In two, three um, tight years. End, tight end Dolchich goes right after that. That's actually um, not a that's not a terrible pick considering they shipped out Noah Fan and they have Russell Wilson now. I mean, they have a ton of other options, but long term building, I'm not too uh they I don't got have too much of a with this. They got Albert O, too. A lot of people think he's going to uh, have a great year. So, I don't know. We'll see, uh, see what happens. Tight end's very shallow. So, all you really need to do is put up six, 700 yards, maybe seven touchdowns, six, seven touchdowns, and you find yourself in the top ten. So, you know, and, and with a competent quarterback, that can happen. Yeah. Uh, Mechie goes off the board next. Uh, unfortunate news for Mechie that we hear today. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, bless him, prayers to him. Hopefully he'll be uh, sure. able to come back. But um, a good pick there, too. I think he was pretty much the best wide receiver left on the board at that point. Um, I would agree opinion, with that. My opinion, anyway. Yeah, so uh, good pick there. And then Hammer comes right back. He had another pick here. Is this, that's you, right? You had another pick here and take uh, yes, Davis Price to, mm -hmm. uh, back out, I guess, Elijah Mitchell, right? Oh, yeah. Same same exact concept as Zamir White. Um, you know, Elijah Mitchell was a rookie, so I know he'll be there for a little while. But Elijah Mitchell was a six round pick. So, you know, 
I know how San Francisco rotates their running backs, especially in that Kyle Shanahan offense. So it couldn't hurt me to pick up Davis Price. Like you said, Elijah Mitchell, they rotate running backs, um, you know, and Mitchell does get banged up. He got banged up a little bit last year. He When he's in there, Elijah Mitchell is tremendous, and he's going to be one of my two starting running backs. But I do. St- I still need some security at that running back position. I don't have top end running backs on my team. I think I have two solid RB twos in Mitchell and Josh Jacobs. But you know, with running backs, you just never know, especially with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. So, like I said, more of a need, uh, more of a security pick than anything else. And you know, if he if he turns out to um, get some run then hey better for me if he doesn't i still have elijah mitchell and you know i'm good to go but security blanket more than anything yeah yeah i mean i think the biggest thing with like san fran is like you gotta have you gotta roster like all three of them i have jeff wilson as well (laughs) Jeff Wilson because you know is it jeff wilson or they said trey sermon started looking really good again they said he might get the second spot so it's like it's weird it's like you gotta have if you have all of them, then you're good. Because at least one yeah. of them's going to play and they're going to get the ball. But yeah, I mean, I think oh. the thing I feel comfortable about is Elijah Mitchell is should be the top option because he was oh, the best right. out of all of their running backs last year. He was tremendous, and you know when I picked him up, I didn't expect him to be this good for me. You know when he played, he did miss time. He did miss time. You know in the fantasy playoffs. But I did have Jeff Wilson, but you know, it's you just don't know. You're kind of rolling the dice a little bit. But I feel pretty confident with Elijah Mitchell, you know, and Josh Jacobs as my one two. That gives me enough production to be able to hold down the fort at the RB position, pick up Davis Price. You never know what happens. And then, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think obviously Mitchell is the guy, but the problem is who the who is going to be that number two or who are they going to give it to after that? You know, yeah. is it going to be, is it going to be a mixture and then whoever has a hot hand during the game? So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough. And like you play. said, Trey, Trey Sermon's yeah. lurking in the background. <laughs> yeah. So you just yeah. don't know, but I, I feel pretty good with the situation I'm in. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I have three of the four running backs on San Francisco. So somebody's <laughs> got to be, you know, somebody's got to be, yeah, you gotta play it safe, right? Um yeah, Shakir, yeah. Shakir goes next. I'm not a crazy fan of uh Shakir. I don't really care about him. Um they've got a few guys out there in Buffalo, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, Gabriel Davis and and between Gabriel Davis, Stefan Diggs, and don't forget about Dawson Knox at the tight end spot. Yeah. You know. But listen, you play with a good quarterback, you always have a chance to produce someone. Uh, uh, Absolutely. And Justin Ross was on the board next. Um, undrafted would have probably been like a first round talent if he wasn't, uh, you know, if he didn't get hurt bad. Um, almost a career ending injury, but they said he is OK. Um, and picked up by Kansas City, which was a big huge opportunity for him. And then he kind of he gets hurt again. He's on the puck. And yes. Now he might not even make the roster going in because of that injury. So it's tough. Um, I really like him, but can he stay injured? And everybody kind of just backed off from that spine uh, injury. So tough, uh, tough for him there. Let's see some linebackers. Go linebacker goes next. But Checo goes after that. Kansas City running back. I don't like that pick really. That was like a, he was like a seventh round pick. I don't think anybody cares about Not him. Really. And they they just picked up uh, Ronald Jones and they got Clyde Edwards Hilaire. That that's really yeah. Hard. And now they got Not McKinnon. They, they re-signed McKinnon now too. So. Yeah, not a whole lot going on there. Uh, another QB, Matt Corral goes off the board. I don't like that pick, of course, as I've been saying. Just in the one QB league, I mean, these are not QBs that have the draft capital. They weren't drafted and, you know, yeah. first known. Like, they just, you and know. And Carolina has Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. Yeah. So yeah, they're not coming in to be expected to start or so. That's yeah, there's no value there. 
back away from there. A couple more defensive guys go after that. Kyle Hamilton, Evan Lloyd, Dubes goes in the third round there um, from Chicken, taking a flyer. So you, you never know who is who who is Aaron Rodgers going to cling to. Who is he going to like? So yeah, and listen, and we talked about this. If 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 you stand out and you st- and you get Aaron's trust, that can pay huge dividends. So at this point in the draft, it's hey, I could take a flyer, put him on the. Put him on the the taxi squad, and in six eight weeks, if he starts really you know progressing along, that could be a uh, that could be a steal as well. But you can't really expect him to do much. Yeah, um, Pierre Strong goes off the board next. Just another running back the uh, Patriots get. So um, same deal as San Francisco. One of their million running backs. So I mean, he's not. He wasn't like a great. Wasn't great, Pierre Strong, but he, I don't know. He's all right. So, whatever. Um, next pick was me, and that's where I picked uh, Brian Robinson here, uh, which we were just talking about me trying to trade to get uh, Algier there. He was just the best guy on the board at that time, and he's actually going to get burned. So, you know, I just took him, and now I'm going to try and trade over, him. Over him. Gibby and McKissick? Huh? Over Gibby and McKissick? What do you mean, over Gibby and McKissick? He is no. He's gonna get burned. Like they're gonna be split in the backfield. He's gonna take the goal line carries. You know they've ar- they've already put that uh, in motion and they've already shown that in kind of OTA. So I don't. Yeah, that's not. A, I don't like that RB situation at all. But I was gonna say that makes it a little. You know, he, does have, he does have the chance, and then also you know who knows if they're resigned Gibby. I just don't think the coaching staff that's there currently likes Gibby. They weren't the ones that drafted him. And yeah. you know he didn't fumble the ball last year. He's a he's a good running back. He transitioned from being a wide receiver to running back. And so I think if you, if you give him the work, yeah, but he's been top twelve the last you know two years. If you give him the workload, he can be you know a top ten guy. They just refuse to do that. Um, obviously, we see them resign McKissick instead of you know not, and then they draft a running back. So uh, it's an RB room. I want to stay far away from uh, at this point. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, Wandell Robinson goes next. Not a huge fan of him. I just think he'll be a little kind of gadget player. I don't know how relevant he'll be fantasy wise. Yeah. So that's kind of my thoughts on Robinson there. Um, I do like the next pick there, though. Thornton um, should be, you know, one of the guys that gets a chance there for the Patriots. So, but we'll do see you? What is his they they did pick up Devontae Parker, they still have Nikhil Harry, Hunter Henry. Oh, gets, they got, Hunter they got rid of Harry. Harry oh, got they traded. Did. They did, they did. You're right. Yeah, ha- Harry got traded. So I'm not saying he's gonna come right in and make a immediate crazy impact, but um yeah. crazy fast guy. I think he had the fastest 40 yard dash in the combine if yeah, I wasn't but, but I don't I don't trust I don't trust Bill Belichick's draft uh, track record when drafting wide receivers. So that 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 is true as well. That is true as well. But you know they don't have a, a main guy over there. I guess it's Devonte Parker now. If you think about it, it's still got yeah. I guess, Myers. And stuff. But they don't have like a a go to guy. A so go to guy. Yeah. Um, you know we'll see. I guess what he can do with Mac Jones over there, and then um, the last two picks. I guess uh, Thibodeau or whoever you say that. And then uh, Trayvon Walker go with those last two picks, which, you know, makes sense, you know, in this particular format with the defensive guys compared to the offensive guys that were left on the board. So, yeah, I actually had the 314. So that was the last pick. And that was he turned, right. out, he turned out to be the he was the actual number one overall pick in the real draft. He so. was. So, yeah, that's a- you just draft him at the end there. So I just drafted him at the end, and that was a position I was targeting because, you know, as I said, I didn't need a ton of help. And I feel like, you know, a, def- a young defensive end, you're a number one overall pick. If you could come in and make an impact, you know, that could help me out. And and on the D-line, you know, listen, it's not going to win you games, but, you know, it, it could definitely add up if, you, if you're able to get a couple of sacks here, a couple of sacks there. So – a little bit more of a flyer for me, but still worth it at that that last pick. Yeah. 
Definitely, definitely. Well, uh, that wraps up just a little overview of our draft here. So, uh, you got anything else uh, you want to say, Hammer? Nah, I'm actually um, I'm pretty happy with the draft overall. I think it was it was all of our first foray into an actual dynasty draft, which was pretty cool and pretty interesting. Um, I enjoy I thoroughly enjoyed it just from the standpoint of it makes you feel like a real GM now, not just redraft, which we've been doing for almost a decade now. Um, it, it really forces you to do your homework and it really forces you to, you know, roster build with not only the present in mind, but the future. So I, I do like the feel of actually dipping into a rookie draft. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I like my draft, too. I'm happy who I got, Sky Moore. I was able to get David Bell just so late. So I was real uh, I was real happy about that. Um, I didn't have a third-round pick, but I got back in. Um, I think I gave away a second for next year, which I probably shouldn't have did. But I just wanted to get Robinson because uh, he was just still on the board at that time. If he was still on the board, I wanted to just grab him um, yeah. before somebody else could. Um, and like I said, now I have that little bit of trade bait to kind of, you know, go get Algier. So we'll make that happen sooner or later. And um, other than that, I mean, that's it. But uh, thanks for watching. Let us know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see y'all on the next one. But uh, we out, guys. Do it. Do it. <laughs>